Good afternoon, everyone. Hope you guys are doing okay. Good to see you. Hi, Hannah, Susan, Anna, another Susan. Hi, Robert. Nozuelo, good to see you guys. I'll just give it a minute to see if anyone else would like to join us on uh, this call. Hello, hello, hi. <laughs> Um, hi, Abby. Welcome. Okay. Um, so we're talking today. We've got a theme for today, um, which is great. The theme is adding value to your services. Um, so we've got a few things to discuss in there. Some a little bit cliche, I suppose, in many ways, but some are very practical. Um, but there is a lot to this in a sense. Um, and the, it, it's really interesting because there's no particular one way that you can say, oh, as a virtual assistant, this is how you add value to your service because everything is really specific to you. So I'm gonna give you a range of things and then you can pick them out and say, well, that's applicable to me. That's not that type of thing. Also depends obviously on what stage you're at in your business um, and various other things. So I'll give it a minute just in case anyone else would like to join us before we start. Um, where are you guys calling in from? Oh, Alice has joined us. Where are you guys calling in from more? Tuning in from or videoing in from? <laughs> Cameraing in from? <laughs> UK. Cool. We've got Susan in the UK. Las Vegas, Nevada. Ooh, posh. Detroit, <laughs> our Susan from Detroit, Alison's from Canada, Anna's in Canada, me from Guatemala, this is so exciting, I love this, okay, okay, so I think we will get started, so I'm just going to chat to you today as always with these calls um this call is not just about the things that I want to talk about you can also ask questions for yourself it's just if there is anything you want to ask about online business virtual assistance one sourcing anything relating to that if you've got a problem with a client um if you've got an issue that you want to solve you know please feel free to share and I may be able to add some tips or advice or anything like that um, you can do that at any point during our discussions or our talks here. You can leave a chat in the chat box if you want to talk to me. You're welcome to do that too if you want to explain the situation. Um, but in the meantime, um, I do have a topic of discussion, which for those of you who have just arrived, we're talking about adding value as a virtual assistant, which is really, really important. And it's even more important these days because virtual assistance has got competitive. I was on a coaching call yesterday with a guy and he was talking to me that he wanted to offer, you know, general virtual assistant services, which is fine. But it's how you present those services and package those services, which is so important these days because, you know, people of, honestly don't know these days that they need certain services and you have to be able to package it so it speaks their language and they say okay well I understand now that I need that so we're going to touch on these points and you know go through these things but I wanted to give you some ideas of things that you could do in order um, to add value to your service now the first cliche thing is that the best way to add value to a client, it's a cliche, but it's the most important one, um, is to value yourself. Uh, there are so many virtual assistants out there who are so, I, I guess in a way, uh, afraid or concerned that they won't be able to convince the client that they are worthy of working with them. Um, and most of the time, not all of the time, but most of the time you'll find in these situations, it's because they simply doubt themselves, like they don't value themselves in the same way. And the problem with that is it's going to come across to the client. So you might just think you're really down on your luck and you're not able to secure clients and, you know, you're going through the consultation process and things aren't going quite right or things are going wrong 
and it's actually how you carry yourself, how you conduct yourself and how you feel about yourself in general that the client is probably picking up on. Um, I know when I've spoken to people, talked with people, done interviews with people, you often know when they're a little bit nervous, when they're a little bit not sure of themselves. That's one thing. But you really see it when they don't value themselves, when they're like, you know, if you hire me, I'll be lucky instead of you'll be lucky to have me. Um, so that's really important to make sure that you go into any consultation in the frame of mind that I am worth it. I am going to add value to your business. And by doing that, you'll carry yourself differently. You'll talk differently. Um, you'll say things differently. Uh, answers to questions will come differently. So it's really, really important. A little bit cliche, the whole, you know, like, no one's going to love me unless I love myself. But it's true. No one's going to value you unless you're going to value yourself. Everyone loves themselves. <laughs> we went a bit touchy-feely there, but it's absolutely true. So get your head around the fact that I am worth it. You know, whoever I talk to, whoever hires me, it's a benefit to them. Sure, it's mutually beneficial, but they need me. Um, I will add value to their business. I will bring lots of things to the table that they may not already have or and I can do it better than they might get elsewhere, that type of thing. So let's talk about the different ways of how you can add value besides valuing yourself. But this will also in, sort of build up that encouragement of, yes, actually, I, I am worth it. I am, you know, a valuable asset to a client. And again, that will carry across in everything you say. So the first thing I would suggest that you do is really review your pricing and your packages and how you offer your services. So when people have something to quantify, you will find occasionally that that sometimes devalues the service. When you focus too much on the time or the hours and you focus too much on the task or the service, then this will be a problem because a lot of clients will try and quantify and compare you to other people because clients will shop around. There's lots of VAs out there now, lots of VAs who are doing different things, lots of VAs who are catering to different niches. And again, this is something I talked about with this guy yesterday, so we'll sort of touch on it. But if you can somehow eliminate the idea of selling hours and selling tasks this will add value to your service and your package so how do you do that so with the one sourcing model um, which is the business model I created we don't sell services we sell roles because people always value people more than they do tasks um, because you as as a person you're unique as a task it's not unique OK, so that's why we sell roles instead of services. So I would always suggest that you instead of selling things like calendar management or inbox management or um, email marketing or things like that, you know, you sell the role which be, which might be marketing manager or social media manager um, or personal assistant or executive assistant or something like that, something that is going to demonstrate that you're a person and you have a skill. Because sometimes people don't associate the task with a skill because they think, oh, it's just this or it's just that. But when you, when you package it as a role, people will find that there is a, a lot more value in that. And when you can't quantify it, when you put it into a package and then you consult with someone and in one source and we work to a budget. So I had someone the other day um, say to me, you know, how do I add value to my packages? And they said, OK, so I've got like a 20 hour package and a 10 hour package. And should I discount the 20 hour package to add more value to the service? So discounts don't necessarily add value, okay? So this is where we have to sort of get this really clear. You're, by discounting something, you're not adding value. Now, it's a misconception because you think, oh, I am adding value because I'm doing more hours and the client's getting more for less, okay? But that's not adding 
true value. That is discounting, it's uh, making offers. And I truly believe that there is a place for that. Like never, never be um, concerned about being flexible with your rates, negotiating with your rates and things like that. But don't package it as a discount. Like the more I do for you, the cheaper it's going to be. Um, do it as different packages with different price points and different budgets. So you can easily say to someone, OK, what's your budget? OK, you fall into this package. So that's really a kind of lesson in the difference between adding value with the pricing. It's about making sure that you can meet people's budgets of what they're willing to spend, but not basically saying the more I work, the cheaper I'll get. That's not adding value. So think about it in terms of roles, in terms of uh, people, in terms of adding value, but not talking about the task because that you know the client will focus on okay well i'm looking for whatever it is you know community engagement in my facebook group how much do you do it for how much do you do it for how much do you do it for they're focused completely on the task and the price and usually that also comes with an hour so it's even more easier to quantify instead of looking at okay what results am I going to get and is that worth it to me what kind of budget am I willing to spend in order to get those results and that's kind of mindset you want uh, when you're working with a client so that's the first thing the next thing which kind of follows on from that is the substance of what you offer so there is value in substance now again I don't mean the more hours you do I mean basically understanding what the client wants and needs and desires and you need to go through a questioning process with the client in order to do that now that questioning process in itself adds value so you're not just sitting there on a consultation or, or, or whatever or even if it's not a consultation you're just kind of like you know a client is emailing you and asking you can you do this or can you do that it's really important to not just go back and say, you know, yes, I can. And this is how much it costs. It's important to question the client so the client feels heard and the client feels like you actually care about their business. So you want to ask questions like, OK, well, what's your goal? What end result do you want to see? Um, what you know, if you are spending money and investing on this, you know, what would you consider a good investment? We touched on this a, a little bit um, when people are kind of like asking about the prices of things and what they get for it. And sometimes it's difficult to quantify that in a, in a one sourcing sense because it's hard to say you're going to get this, this and this when you don't want to work by the hour or, you know, on the clock or anything like that. So it's really important to say, OK, well, what is it worth to you? Like, what what would you like to see, you know, if you spent you know, let's say, for example, they say, oh, I, I really want, you know, sales. OK, well, how many sales would you like to see? OK, well, I would like to see five sales. OK, well, how many people do you need in order to achieve those five sales? You know, so you have questions that lead the client in, get the client talking about their business. Clients love to talk about themselves. Hey, guys. Um, if you just joined us, clients love to talk about themselves, OK, whether you're on an initial consultation or whether you just check in with a client on a regular basis, they love to be able to share with you like what's going on. And even and if you prompt that, that in itself, the prompt of, hey, how's it going? How did that thing we worked on go in the last couple of weeks? How did this project work out for you? How have your sales been since we did the launch? How is it? You know, it's like checking in with a client. You add value through the questioning process and you add value by getting the client to talk about themselves, to talk about their business and feel heard, basically. Um, yes, Hannah. Oh, no. You look like you were raising your hand. <laughs> like <laughs> okay. all right so yeah so the questioning process is really really important um and ask the right questions and really take an interest in what the client is doing and you know make notes of what the client is doing even in a, on a personal level as well that still adds value to their business because they feel like actually this person really cares rather than just trying to sell me more hours or get my work out of me so the next thing that can add value 
of course, is what facilities you offer for the client. So loads of BAs will have facilities set up, but they kind of take it for granted themselves. So if you do happen to have systems which are project management systems that you put the client in, if you have setups for calendar sharing or for online appointment booking with you or for them or anything, if you have a setup um, where, for example, let's say you're a social media assistant and you have an account with one of the social media management systems and you put all your clients in that account, that is adding value to a client because that's something that you've got that you can offer the client that they wouldn't have to spend the additional money on. So if you say to a client, in a sense, depending on what type of service you have, you know, I offer this service, but I also offer the facilitation of this service, which saves you X amount of dollars, you know, that you would normally invest in this system or that system or anything like that. So facilities add value. And like I say, we take it for granted because sometimes we're like, OK, you know, yeah, let's start working. It's this amount of money per hour and get the client in the project management system and then get them set up in there and then put them in your social media management system and get their accounts set up in there. And technically, like most of the time, the VA absorbs that into the cost of their business because they're serving um, all of their clients through these different systems. So that's what they want to work in. And then they feel I know I've I've seen this before, like where a, uh, a VA is offering these systems like, oh, I've got a project management system. I've got this system. I've got this system. But I don't know if the client's going to be happy with me because what if it's not what they want? You know, and that's a, a kind of sort of strange mindset to have because you're going to the client and you're saying, Do you know, what, I'm adding value to your business because I've got these systems. I've set them up. I'm the one working in them. I'm the most efficient in these systems. I can work most effectively in these systems and you don't have to pay anything else in order to achieve that. You know, so that is a value add for the client. That's not something where the client's going to say, oh, well, I don't really want to work in that system or I don't really want to be set up in that or I don't really want you to post your social media using that system because you add the value by saying it's more efficient, it's more effective, you don't have to spend money on it, et cetera, et cetera. So look at all the online facilities that you offer clients and use those as a value add to put into and inject into your packages. So you're not just doing labor or you're not just processing tasks, you're adding facilities on there as well, which adds value to the package. Then of course, there's like really highlighting your expertise and your experience. And I'm not talking about qualifications. You can add those if you want to. Um, qualifications are great, throw them in there. But I'm talking about how many years have you been doing something? What kind of knowledge do you have on a particular industry? I spoke to a guy yesterday who had been in the um, transportation industry for many, many years, um, but he wants to start working as a virtual assistant. And we were discussing about how he best goes about that. And he's going to set up this general VA business. And he's he's done these things over the years for himself and for people that he's worked with. And he's like, but I've got no experience. Like I've got, you know, who's going to hire me because, you know, I've never been a VA before. But that really doesn't matter. You know, so so get out of that frame of mind that, oh, I'm starting from zero because this is my first day as a virtual assistant. There's no, you've worked in an industry for so many years. You've gained so many years experience in certain roles or certain tasks. It doesn't matter where they were or what label you had while you were doing it. You have experience, you have expertise. So when you're putting together your packages and particularly thinking about who you're going to work with, it's really important to understand the value of what you're bringing with you throughout those years of working with someone, you know, like I've had people come out of hospitality industry, for example, where they've been working in restaurants for years and then suddenly they want to become a virtual assistant. OK, so you can still draw on that those years of experience in hospitality and things like that through you know, the different situations that you've been put in? Have you been working with teams? Have you been customer facing? You know, have you had to deal with difficult situations? 
all of this stuff adds value to your business. Now, just because it isn't labeled virtual assistant doesn't mean to say it's not bringing something to the table and adding value to the client. So think about it a little bit strategically. Obviously, for this guy, when we looked at, you know, into a little bit more and how he's going to bring a value proposition to the table of working with clients, obviously, working with people in the transportation industry, drawing on the years of experience that he's already had. He started his own business at one point and he ran that for a couple of years. So he's got knowledge in, in that area of starting and running a business. You know, so think about all those different things and then you can sort of share them in a more generic way as my experience, my expertise, as opposed to, well, that's totally valueless because it's a completely different industry or, you know, I didn't, you know, do anything relating to this previously, but, you know, it's kind of like that. It's like, think about what you can do and then think about who needs that kind of knowledge who needs that kind of experience, who needs that expertise, and start to think about who you can expand out the services to, or more specifically, offer those services to. Because when you're on a consultation, and this again, it's the whole psychological, how do I add value to things? You know, when you're on a consultation, and you're talking confidently about a topic that you know about, um, or you're enthusiastic about, or you have some experience with, you will conduct yourself completely different to somebody who doesn't know what they're talking about. So it's important to be able, when you're doing consultations with potential clients, to be able to have a kind of ability to discuss things that are important to you or you have some knowledge on, because that will also add value to your overall offer and your overall package. Then, obviously, this is if you are more established, but if you haven't been established as a virtual assistant, like we just said, you don't need to have been a virtual assistant for, you know, 10 years or something like that to, to be able to say that you, you're experienced. No, you can be a virtual assistant for the first day, but as long as you've got something to offer, you know, then you'll include that. And this is kind of the same. So social proof and testimonials and feedback and things like that. So if you're able to add anything like that, that is a value add for the my dog agrees, that is a value <laughs> for the client. So if you do have any feedback, think about who you've worked with over the years. Think about when you've done jobs for people and they've come back with, you know, feedback about how brilliant you are and stuff like that. This is all really important. Gather up that information and use it as a tool to add value to your packages because social proof is again, it's something that adds authority. It's something that helps develop trust without having to do anything to develop trust other than display it or show it um, because it's just social proof and social activity. So any kind of positive feedback about working with you or even just, you know, if, you, if you're coming into this having never worked before potentially, then you can still find people who can testify against your character um, or the type of person you are. You know, um, you're not just reliable when you go to and show up to work. You can be reliable just by nature. Um, you know, you can be that person who never lets anyone down. You can be that person who always will be on time, you know, and that doesn't require you to have been a virtual assistant for years or anything like that. It just requires you to have that kind of built into your nature. And there is something else that we can also add on to that is having particular standards for your work and being able to communicate those standards. So whether those standards be things like paying attention to detail, uh, whether those standards mean um, double checking your work, whether those standards mean doing your research, um, you know, you've got to think to yourself, and this is a great way to do this. It's like put yourself in the position of the client and do this little exercise and say, OK, if if my package is 500 pound a month or 1000 pound a month or something like that, if I'm charging that amount of money, what would I expect? to be able to feel good about that investment and to feel that I've got really good value out of that investment. Because you are the best judge of this more than anyone. If you really wanna know what the client is thinking or wanting, you've got to put yourself in their position. Like, okay, if I want a thousand, 
and I feel resistance and I feel it might be a little bit too much is it because maybe I would feel if I was paying a thousand pound it would be too much so how can I add value to that and then kind of like think about all the things that you would want to see occur most of this is down to results all the things that you'd want to see occur from that investment to just feel really assured that you've made a good decision in that hire so I tend to do this when I'm looking when I'm looking for virtual assistants and I'm able to list out all the different expectations that I have or things that I would like to see and I'm able to go forward and you know look for that but the client doesn't necessarily think about doing that because they're not in that frame of mind they're not in that mindset they just know they need help and they know it's going to cost them money and then they're concerned about how much it's going to cost and then they're concerned about well what if I invest this money and I don't I don't get what I want and then you have to start thinking about well what do you really want you know what do you really want to see from this so put yourself in the position of the client and then write down, okay, if I was spending a thousand pound, what would I want that person to do? Would I want them to show up on time? Would I want them to be punctual? Would I want them to commit to deadlines and take those very seriously? Would I want them to uh, do things to a fixed budget, to an agreed standard? Would I want them to double check their work? So like kind of list out all these things which would be important to you and what you would love to see and then embody those things, you know, be that person and share that with the clients before they've even, you know, decided to hire you. You know, you've got to say like, this is what you can expect from me. And this is why in one sourcing, we have the pledge. So if you guys haven't... um, looked at one sourcing yet we've got one sourcing kits it's a free training course uh all about one sourcing which is my business model and how we put it together and what our standards are and how we communicate these to the client so whether you choose to use um the same kind of standards i've put the link in the chat whether you choose to use the same kind of standards or whether you choose to kind of like no wait that's not the link that's my fault. It's virtualmissfriday.com. Um, whatever standards you use, make sure that they're ones that if you were paying for those from yourself, like you would feel 100% confident, like, yes, I'm, I'm delivering value by having these standards. Okay, so that's there. It's a second link. Okay. So get your standards and then convey those in detail. Like, so people will look at those and think, God, I really appreciate what this person does. I really appreciate the work ethics of this person, the morals of this person, um, the authenticity of this person, you know, that type of thing. It's really important that you can convey that character and not just this is what I can do, these are the ta- these are the skills I have, but this is how I conduct myself when I do them. That will add value to the client, particularly when they look at that list of values that you have when you work and they think, well, I have the same values or I hold myself to the same values or I, that's what I expect from the rest of my team to have these same values. So again, these are all things that will make it really much easier Again, not for you to convince the client that they're right, but for you to show the client, you know, things that they may not look to ask or, you know, stuff like that. I know people who say, well, the client didn't ask for it and they don't know that they need to ask for it. But when they see it, they know they're going to be happy that they saw it. So these are all things that you need to take into consideration. Um, The standards and attention to detail. Um, And then finally, it's really and this is just in a general sense, it's not particularly about value, but it will add value if you can really focus on the things that you really want to do, okay? So if you find yourself in a situation where you like doing some services, but you have resistance to others, then that's not gonna be good for your business because there is gonna be a psychological kink there that you're resisting clients and resisting work because deep down underneath the surface, you don't necessarily want to do it. 
even though you say to yourself on the surface, well, if a client comes in and wants to pay me for it, yeah, I'll do it. But that subconscious level of, I don't like it, I don't particularly enjoy it, it's not something that sounds interesting to me, that is like a natural repellent um, for business. <laughs> it's, you know, beyond amazing how it works. But you are literally, by doing things that you don't want to do, and then saying that you're willing to do them, it's an absolute natural, holistic, organic repellent um for clients they will sense it they'll pick up on it and also not just that let's say for example you can do bookkeeping but you hate bookkeeping but you say oh, okay I can do bookkeeping I can offer that inside my package it's the best way to sabotage your business because there'll be somebody out there who comes and sees you do bookkeeping and then be like yay this is what I want and then they're going to talk to you and you're going to talk about the bookkeeping in, in such a grey, monotone way, unenthusiastic way. And, you know, the fact is you can do it. But then the next person who even may not be as qualified or experienced in bookkeeping as you, but adores it and loves it, will be talking about their bookkeeping service so enthusiastically, so confidently, so, you know, so excited to work with a client and so excited to take that, you know, that bookkeeping on that the, the client will naturally be drawn to them as opposed to being repelled. Um, so it's never just about what do I do and how well can I do it? It's, it's never, ever just about that. So get away from that focus that if I don't have enough experience, somebody else, that, you know, they'll choose someone else. If I, um, if I don't have enough qualifications, they'll choose someone else. What they really will do is they'll choose the person that they feel most confident in. And that confidence comes from everything that we've really talked about today that confidence comes from how you feel it comes from how you think about yourself it comes from your experience in different areas and then how you convey that it comes from so many things it's not just about what you can do because I know some amazing brilliant extremely skilled people who don't get the clients and you know, they're like, I, I don't understand why I'm not getting clients because I have all these qualifications. I have all this experience. You know, some people say I'm overqualified, you know, and that type of thing. And then you've got these people coming in who are far less experienced, but far more enthusiastic. And they're the ones that are securing the clients. And it's not sales technique. It's not some kind of magic silver bullet that they've gone down and you know, read about how to get clients and, you know, things to say to get clients and stuff like that. It's not, it's just like they're willing to talk about it, even if they're not being paid for it. They're willing to share advice and help, even if they're not being paid for it. They're willing to sit there and look at a few things and, you know, share some advice and share some tips, even if they're not being paid for it. They're the ones willing to sit down and write about it, you know, create content and blog posts social media posts, do webinars, do podcasts, uh, you know, do vlogs, you know, create videos on it. They're the people that are naturally going to attract these other people. And it's not a working for a free type thing. It's a real genuine enthusiasm and interest in the package or the service that they're offering. And that will naturally, again, draw those clients in. So it's a whole bunch of things. It's about adding value through certainly through I sense in a monetary purpose by providing value through systems and expenses that you absorb into the cost of your business it's about adding value with you as a person that's first and foremost the most important thing it's about adding value by taking interest in the client questioning the client caring about what's going on in the client's business caring about what's going on in the client's life you know to a certain degree as well you know asking them you know oh how was the wedding that you went to last week or you know how was your son's birthday or something like that it just shows that you're taking an interest and it shows that you care and believe it or not that adds value to the service yes and it's also about sharing you know your knowledge your gifts your talent and doing it in a way where you can convey that you really do 
love it. You really do care about it. You really do want to be the best. You know, you want to stand out as the best, like try to focus, not necessarily on a niche, but try to focus on becoming an expert in something, you know, and I don't mean to say that you have to be a, an expert in, you know, God knows, you know what, but it's like, you know, I'm an expert in inbox management. I love email management I love working on filters and organizing and I love you know inbox zero and I love this and this and this and I've focused my attention and I focused you know and dedicated myself to the to this cause because I know it because I love it because I enjoy it but I also know it really helps my clients I also know that my clients have seen these kind of results I also know that people have come to me with various different problems relating to this and I was able to solve them you know because of how much you care about your service all of these things add extreme amounts of value and will really make you stand out above all those other people who are not liking what they're doing and not caring so much and just trying to pitch, uh, you know, some tasks for some hours and see what comes back from that. So a lot to think about. It all comes down to your packages and your offer and how you deliver that. So it's really, really super important. So does anybody have any questions about today's topic or any other general virtual assistant questions, business questions? I'm here to help you um, and answer those for you if I can be of any use. Anybody you can type in the chat if you want to talk to me. You can do that too. Unmute yourself, I don't mind. Renuka, hi Renuka. Anybody got a question? Oh, hi. <laughs> Anybody got any questions? I'm here for you. Um, this applies to all kinds of services. Yeah, it literally applies to anything, any kind of service that you're offering. Even, even also in terms of product sales, particularly if you do training products or coaching products or you know anything like that. It really, really applies to everything. And it rings so true. And the first point we talked about, about the valuing yourself point before other people will value you is so, so important. That's the first thing that you need to work on. You need to be convinced that you're worth it. You need to be totally convinced that you're bringing value to the table. And once you get over that hurdle, the rest is just details. You know, the rest is just kind of like filling in the gaps and stuff like that. But that really is the most prominent thing. How are we getting on? Any other questions? There's also like other things that you can do to add value. I will add uh, one more suggestion here is that um, you can add value through digital assets. So if you have a, a database or a bank or a client area, you know, when we set up our one sourcing businesses, we give everyone a client area in the back, you know, and it contains uh systems that the client's going to be using with you the client project space how to book an appointment with you making everything super easy for the client so ease is another one you know if you're make if you're doing anything that makes the client's life easier then that's super important but also adding things you know particularly this is great if you're working with a particular niche or a particular industry but adding things like infographics or information or ebooks or things that would be helpful for them you know if you are somebody who does inbox management and stuff like that it's really good and helpful to share your expertise and say, okay, well, we share a client area with our clients and they get exclusive access as a client to all our tips and tricks and things like that of how to delegate inbox management, you know, how to things that you can do to make it more efficient. Um, you know, it could be informational videos. It could be anything like that. So digital assets are great. And the good thing is you create them once you know, like whether it's an infographic or a video or an ebook, and you can deliver those to every single client. So think about building up your client area and building up your digital assets and using that as a way to offer value to the client as well. Um, okay, so we've got some questions. 
Um, so hi Michelle, I'm Noswelu from South Africa. My business is about six months old and I was wondering if we know how I can get global clients. Um, the easiest way is just to go out there and network. Um, there are so many places you can do that right now. There is LinkedIn and Facebook, um, all these social media networks, whichever one you know is your choice. I would say LinkedIn is probably the lowest hanging fruit, but start to build up connections, start to join groups where your clients are going to be hanging out online because online groups, networking groups they're borderless and there's you know I mean sure there's ones that are very restricted like you know um finance consultants in Los Angeles or something like that and you know obviously that's going to attract people in Los Angeles but most of the time you'll find that online particularly in social networking groups and things like that also join membership sites this is a really really good one so like if you find that you have a certain niche of client you know I know a lot of people who go down the sort of female entrepreneur route. So I want to work with, you know, dynamic female entrepreneurs, career women. OK, so where are they hanging out? Go and join a membership site or join a course where all these female entrepreneurs are hanging out. I've seen many VAs take this advice over the years and really make a killing inside these membership sites because they're there as a customer. They're there as an equal you know, we're all the same. And then what they do is they go in and people start to have problems about, let's say, for example, they're doing a course on how to set up a webinar or something like that. And then there's a group and then there's a teacher, you know, and then someone who sets up webinars as a techie VA goes into there in a group full of people that are all thinking to themselves, I want to set up a webinar, you know, and this is why I'm on this course and I want to learn how to do it. And you go in, you start helping people, answering questions, telling them about tools that you would recommend. And in the end, offering and saying, do you know what? I do this as a service. If you're interested, I can help you set this up. You know, why don't we chat? So membership sites and membership groups or courses where they have groups, uh, you know, like membership groups or Facebook groups or something like that where everyone's there to learn a, learn a common thing or understand a common thing. And they've already invested money in it, which is, again, it's, it shows that they're willing to invest in their business and they're willing to invest in that. And you can jump in and help them support them. And then you know that you're already amongst a, a huge amount of people that already are looking for somebody like you. So that would probably be the best tip I have to find global clients. Uh, Susan says, how do you quantify your value? How do you know what your value is? Again, that's about putting yourself in the position of the client. So you can't quantify value, which is a very good thing. You don't want to quantify value. Um, we don't want to quantify tasks. We don't want to, quanti you know, quantifying things actually really sucks because it gives you that comparison. You know, uh, this is why I hate women's magazines and, and things like that, because they're basically showing what you showing you what you're supposed to look like you know and this is this is where this is where you should be and this is where you are and there's a whole bunch of space in between so there you therefore you feel you're not as beautiful as you should be or you're not as clever as you should be or you're not as whatever as you should be so value has to be defined by how you feel we all have a built-in conscience we all have a built-in you know emotional gauge system where we say do you know what that I feel really good about this about what I'm offering I feel like this is really worth it I don't feel like I'm shafting anyone or I'm you know like I'm pulling the rug from anyone's feet I really feel good about what I'm offering this is a lot of stuff and but but you feel good about it for yourself as well that you're going to be paid well enough to be able to deliver it so it's not about cramming as much in as possible. So you feel totally knackered and burnt out at the end by delivering it. But I'll oh know that I'm delivering lots of value because I'm burnt out. It's about I'm delivering lots of value because I feel that the result is what people want to see. So the value comes from the result. So whoever your client is, figure out what their result is. And in a way, you can quantify your value by how your package meets or exceeds that result. So that's the closest I think you're going to get to it. So if someone says, I will value this service if I get 
20 comments a week on my blog posts or 20 comments a week on my social media posts. And you sit there and go, that's easy. I can get you 30. You've exceeded the value of what that client wants. Okay. So that's, that's kind of how you can gauge and quantify the value. Um, Anna says, how about writing reports? I think some, some clients expect good reports. You can, you, can, you can add value by anything, you know, anything that you think is a transference of knowledge. You know, a lot of people take themselves for granted because they know so much and they, they know it and they've done it and they do it really well and they can do it like it's second nature. Like, it, you know, it's like so easy to them. But it doesn't mean to say it's easy for other people. So a lot of people, you know, like when I'm on a consultation with them from now and I'm, I'm talking and I'm sharing information, I'm sharing ideas, they're just like astounded, you know, because it's like, God, I never thought of that. But, but I did. But that, that doesn't mean I'm any better than them. It just means that I, I know more in that particular subject than they do. You know, um, I was talking to a, a real estate investor the other day and I was sharing all this information about operations and, and how we should do workflows and processes and things like that. You know, and he was just like, you know, that blew my mind. And I'm like, well, talk to me about real estate for an hour and you'll blow my mind. You know, <laughs> it's just like, cause I don't know much about it. So it's really about, you know, understanding that you have that value within you and whatever way you can get it out there through writing a report, through making a video, through creating a blog post, through sharing a piece of content or even a simple tip, you know, a two line tip on an Instagram post. If somebody can look at it and think, God, I know something now that I didn't know two seconds ago or five minutes ago or one hour ago, then you have added value to their life. And that's pretty easy to do. I hope that helps. Does anybody have any questions? We have a few minutes left before we reach the top of the hour um, and I'm here to help you. Um, but, you know, confidence is a really huge thing and everyone should have confidence in one way or another about something you know and again everything that you know or your knowledge you have had to learn it you know a lot of people have spent hours investing in themselves but they may not see it that way because they needed to know something so they went and researched it and then they fiddled around with something you know or a system or then they went to you know look at something else and they figured that out you know and then they're just kind of like going through the motions thinking oh this is just how it works but once you know those things and other people don't you're going to save them loads of times so loads of heartache you know you've got experience with it so you're going to be able to say to people don't do it that way do it this way because I made that mistake and it didn't go well for me and then I figured this out and this was way quicker you've just added value to someone's life that that adds value to your service and in many many ways so help people on social media as much as possible help people in these membership sites and these networking groups or the people who are going on courses to learn about specific things you know it's really really important to add tidbits of value as you're trying to go through the process of getting clients and then hit them with everything you've got once they do become a client Okay, so if you are interested, and I'll mention this right now, because we have coming up in October, um, a getting, I'm going to call it a getting clients, a client creation workshop. It's a workshop which I'm dedicating two days to where we're going to break it down into eight different sessions. And we're going to cover a complete client funnel from start to finish, from going through the package, the offer, making sure it's the right one for you, the right one for your clients or your niche or whoever it is that you're targeting and you want to work with, right through the steps of putting it together and building it and going through the process of how you get people into that funnel. So it's attracting leads, then look at lead magnets, and then we're going to look at converting those leads that you're attracting through the funnel into paying clients which is ultimately our end our end result so the value add for you from from my angle than this is that I will help you get clients okay so when we look at it in that way if you can take what I share and if you follow through with it which you know some people do some people don't some people procrastinate a little bit but I make it as simple as possible if you follow through the step-by-step -step process 
you will be getting clients on the other end. So I'm running a complete workshop which shares this generic funnel, which can be applied to any type of service business, just like these tips today are applicable to any type of service business. So if you want to join me on that, I will post the link for you now. Um, so you can check that out. And like I say, it's two days. You get all the replays, all the recordings, all the materials for that as well. Um, so I'll be giving you obviously handouts and things like that. So you'll get a good idea actually of, of how I add value to, to what I do in terms of my training and coaching and things through joining this um, course. Let me just go on to, that should be everyone now. So hopefully you'll pick that up. It's www.virtualmissfriday.com forward slash CCW, which stands for Client Creation Workshop. You will gain heaps of value from this, particularly if you're struggling to get clients, particularly if you're feeling like you don't have your process quite together. When you have your process together and your funnel together, you feel a lot more confident about what you're doing because you know that there is a certain path. It's tried, it's tested you know, that type of thing. So you'll feel like you can confidently move forward. So I'm going to teach you how that happens. We're going to have training videos. We're going to have tutorials. Uh, we're going to have different things that you need to think about while you're doing that. And like I say, it's two days. If you can attend live, that will be perfect because you can also ask questions um, throughout the process. But if you can't attend live, don't worry. There will be replays of the sessions. And if you can attend some sessions and not other sessions, um, then that's okay too. So you'll have a full intensive couple of days. I'm doing it on a weekend um, because that was what was requested of me from most people. And I guess the weekends are more free. So we'll do it over a Saturday and a Sunday. Um, yeah, and it'll be good to get together. We can have some fun, um, hopefully. And also during this time, I haven't done this um, for a very, very long time, um, but I'm going to also bring you into my world um as a virtual assistant an additional no and someone works online so i'm planning on doing it in you know i'll have obviously the tutorial based stuff but i'll plan on inviting you into my life in a way so to speak um you'll see my home where i live you'll see how i go about my day i'm i'm a mum i work from home you know so you'll get little insights into how i live my life um here in in egypt as well so um, I hope that that will add a little bit of interest for you. We're going to have a little bit of fun. We're going to do a little bit of lifestyle work in there about if you do manage to crack the client code, um, which hopefully I'll share with you. If you do manage to crack the client code, what possibilities that could mean for you in terms of being a virtual assistant and how that could, you know, show up in your life and, and change your life? Because being a virtual assistant has literally changed my life. You know, the decision I took um, 17 years ago to become a virtual assistant was the single best decision I ever made in my life. Um, I would never go back on it. I would never change it. I do not regret it. I have had so many ups and downs with it. I have lost huge amounts of money. I have had huge amounts of big wins. Um, and that has all been a learning process, which I now pass on and I share with other people. I'm still working as a virtual assistant. I now call it one sourcing, but it's, you know, technically a business model that I live by, I have my one sourcing clients. Um, I don't need as many clients as I used to now because my packages are very much centered around value. So they're more about working with less clients, but adding more value to those clients. And it's just amazing, like I say, when you, when you crack the client code and you get that repetitive confidence of, right, if I need a client, I can go and get one and this is how I'm going to do it. And that's what I want to share with you on this workshop. So check that out if you're interested, virtualmissfriday.com forward slash CCW. And hopefully I'll see you there. Um, we'll have a lot of fun. You'll get to have a window into my life as a virtual assistant working from home. Um, yeah, and hopefully we'll have we'll have some fun on that too, as well as learn a lot of things. Okay, guys, so I'm going to wrap this call up. Thank you so much for attending. It was lovely to see you all. Um, I hope to see you on the workshop. And if you have anything or need anything, as always, please do not hesitate to reach out to us um, and the support team on support at virtualmissfriday.com. We're always so happy to help you. 
um take care thank you guys and i shall hopefully see you soon bye gloria bye allison bye susan bye everyone <laughs> bye